Okay, I was born in Woodbury, New Jersey. My father and mother lived there for a number of years, and my father was a Marine. World War II, bomb disposal, and fished down here out of this marina in the, 19, the late 1940s. Um, 1958, they actually closed on it. The winter of 1958 through 1959, Dad built the first fleet of 21 white Jersey Cedar Garveys, and we opened for business in 1959. Turtles is, we called it, the March of the Turtles every year because diamondback terrapins would come up on the beach next to us here. The moms would lay their eggs, make their nests, they would go back into the water, and then about 60 days later, the hatchlings would hatch. We would watch them walk right on down to the water. They would march like little soldiers, come out of the nest, and immediately head to the bay. The interesting thing about terrapins is they uh, really try to come back and lay their eggs where they were hatched. Their nests, they try desperately to make it the same place every year. So just by ben benefit of being one of the last undeveloped bay properties here and having a boat ramp next to me that the turkeys still have access to land on, we get the same moms probably year after year. We've had nests on this property for the 50 years that I've been here and we've enjoyed watching the babies. The ultimate goal here is to raise these terrapins to the point where maybe three, four, five inch shell size, I say in theory large enough that would choke a seagull. So usually from the time that I take in a hatchling, could be a couple of hours right out of the, the nest or out of the egg, into releasing them, which we do about three times a year. I usually have them for about a year. They almost look like they need little beach blankets on the rocks. They're funny the way they bask, but that's for a very specific purpose. Their shells are, or carapace underneath, is actually a bony structure. They need high amounts of calcium and they need lots of sunlight in order to harden that calcium to grow up to be healthy, um, healthy adults that can withstand the environment, a lot of the predators. The people that I work with in Drexel University and the Wetlands Institute, all the scientists, the environmentalists around here use these diamondback terrapins as a gauge to how healthy our marshlands are. The marshlands support all of our bird species, our fish species, the spawning grounds. That's why the diamondbacks are so critically important to save, to rescue, and to keep the population going. So that's why I do what I do. Plus they're fun. <laughs> The normal survivor, survival rate of a diamondback hatchling is about one in a thousand with all the different barriers, the uh, getting eaten, the getting dried out on the way or squashed on the way seeking the back bay. How in the world do I get all these baby hatchlings? What happens? Number of things. Number one, again, they come to me where we have nests that, natch, that hatch naturally on the property and in the neighboring properties at the Ventnor Educational Complex and also at Thai school now that are very much interested in coastal ecology and have invited us to work hand in hand with them and the students in recognizing that the hatchlings need to be saved. So the, the children will see them hatching and rather than putting them back into the bay where they most likely will be eaten or taking them home for pets, which a lot of them were doing, and then maybe releasing them into the ocean, which is the other thing that is a problem here. These terrapins are a salt marsh species the salt content of the ocean exceeds the bay and your brackish waters and your estuaries and things like that considerably. These turtles actually can't handle the salt content of the ocean. Other major threat to terrapins, and they're largely males, are crab traps. The state of New Jersey requires that on every commercial crab trap, and these are fairly large ones, that a turtle excluder device be attached to the outside um, entryways. This keeps large terrapins from entering the crab traps, and this reduces the kill there also, because once they get into a crab trap, they can't get out. Unfortunately, these turtles need to breathe air, they don't breathe water, and they die, so that's another way we lose them.
The wonderful thing about saving and preserving the Diamondback Terrapins is it's relatively easy to get people involved in it. They're cute, they're neat, and they are a coastal, unique species that is protected. For example, the Margate Bridge Causeway, which I can actually see from my place over here, and which was a source of a lot of road kills that caused the bridge company chagrin and their road um, crews were constantly cleaning up the terrapins. That project came together last year, a fencing project masterminded, or at least we say connecting the dots by one Margate resident, a passionate woman named Lisa Doherty. Her daughter, Natalie, and her husband put in an awful lot of background work, ran around to all the other people who are involved in terrapin preservation, Wetlands Institute, Drexel, she approached the city of Margate. She found a source for the fencing and did all of the legwork. The Boy Scout troops that cooperated as the volunteer labor, client construction, all the people listed on the shirt and given credit to. And Lisa actually got the whole project running last year to put one mile of fencing up on the Margate Bridge Causeway. We watched it for a year, and according to the bridge company, the road kills in that section were reduced substantially enough to make them be willing to go ahead and do the project again this year and do the next section of roadway. So that's a terrific project. We, I expect that it'll be an ongoing one for a next session, next, next section next year. There are many other roadways in the area. People come into me all the time and remark, hey, Robin, I didn't see any road kills of Terrapin moms on the Margate Bridge Causeway where the fencing is up. However, on West End Avenue behind Ventnor, on the Longport Summers Point, Point Bridge Causeway. They now co come in and ask me, Let's, what can we do about this? So I give them contact people for those particular roads.